Welcome back to another edition of What's New in Asana. This is your January 2025 edition. And today we're going to be talking about five new updates that Asana recently rolled out that you may have missed and want to check out in your Asana instance. Number one, we're going to be talking about new sorting options in the Gantt view. Uh, second, we're going to talk about enhanced tab management in your project view. Then we're going to be looking at new private custom fields and different editing uh, permissions and rights. And I know a a lot of you are going to be really excited about this because we've been asking for it for a long time. Then we're going to look at some new curated team pages and what Asana is uh, rolling out for us. And then last, we're going to finish off with new transfer allocation options inside of the capacity plan. But if you are new here, my name is Mark e. Murray. I'm the CEO at Surface and we are proud Asana partners. And I make videos like this every single week to help you and your team get the most out of your Asana investment. So if this is your first time here, would love for you to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. If you're a long time follower of the channel, thank you so much. Make sure you like this video and share it with someone who would also get some value. So the first thing we're gonna look at is the custom sorting inside of the Gantt view. So let's get into the demo. So the first thing we wanna take a look at, I'm gonna to go to just a random project here. I'm gonna pull up our, our Gantt view. And so uh, traditionally we've been able to sort in the Gantt view by sections only. And so here we have our project summary, master timeline, press. But now for the first time, we can actually create different custom groupings where you can have one layer of grouping and then you can add a sub group as well. And so in this case, rather than just sorting by section, we can now sort by any custom field. So I'm gonna check out the assignee custom field. So now by assignee, we can see all the work related to each individual on the team. We can sort through them. So this allows your team to get to the work that matters to them a lot faster. We can also simply sort by department or project or launch phase. And so here we have all of the marketing, the development, all of the production tasks. And so teams can just focus on the work that matters to them. But again, with the subgrouping, I'm gonna add another layer. Let's add on the assignee again. There we go. And now we have all of our marketing team tasks also subdivided by our different individuals. So. A really great update, a new way that we can save views inside of Asana. So rather than just having the standard Gantt view, we can go in and of course you can, you know, add your different filters if you just want to see, you know, one individual's work. So if I just want to see the work for Diana, I can go in and we can save that as a custom view for Diana. So a really cool update there. Check it out for yourself. Next one I'm gonna show you is the enhanced tab management. Now, I'm uh, not exactly sure on the use case for this. If you figure something out, throw it in the comments. We'd love to hear um, how you're using this. But traditionally, we've been able to just, you know, take our mouse and click and drag and reorder really quickly these tabs. But now if you click on one and then you press space bar, it's gonna highlight it like that. And then you can simply press the left and right arrow keys to move it around. Again, I'm not exactly sure what the use case for this um, is, but if this is helpful to you, now you know that you can do that really quickly. Again, you just click on it, press your space bar to highlight, and then use your left and right arrow keys to move through really easily, all right? The third update we're gonna go to are private custom fields and new edit restrictions. And so let's open up a new custom field and show you what that looks like. When we go to customize, we're going to go to our fields and we're going to add ourselves a new field. And I'm just going to call this one example. Add a few options here. Like so, we're going to create that field. When we have to create the field initially so we can go in and then give it those edit permissions. So once it's created, we can go back in to edit that field. And of course, we can add it to our library or, you know, um, notify collaborators when a, an option is changed. But if we go up to the filter right up here, we can then change additional settings. And so right off the hop, we have been able to for a while to add different permissions for who can access or change custom fields. But now we can go one step deeper rather than just having um, different permissions, you know, for guests and for editors and for users. We can now go in for the first time and create private fields. All right. So we've been asking for this for a long time because there are certain fields that we either don't want people to see because it's um reporting on some form of data that's not important to the larger team, or maybe we just don't want people to be able to edit it and see what's going on behind the scenes. Maybe this is something senior leadership 
um, needs to track. But the users who are, you know, working through the work day to day don't need to have access to. And so here we're going to go in. It's going to let us know that we are going to make this private. So we want to confirm that. And then we have the ability to add additional users to this field who we want to interact with it in some way. And so I'll just add a few folks here that I want to have access to it. I can give them feel field admin permission, which allows them to make changes like this, add other people and change their access as well. And so when I invite them to it, we can then further drill down and change their specific access, whether we want them to be able to edit this custom field in the project or simply use and still see this custom field. So when we click back out, we're going to go to our list view here. And you'll notice a little uh, eye with the, uh, the eye crossed out there to identify this as a private custom field. And when we look at it in the project detail view, we'll also see that eye there. And so if you're seeing it, you have some level of access. Myself as a field admin can go in and select it and make changes and also edit those changes. And of course, go back in and remove access or add access as needed. So check that out for yourself. Um, see, I'm sure there are various use cases that you can apply to it. And so I'd love to know how you're using that new feature. As many of you already know, I run a consulting company called Surface, which is a proud Asana partner. We specialize in a variety of Asana services, including training and workflow optimization. Whether you're in the process of introducing your team to Asana because you're transitioning over from another tool, or you're already using Asana but feel like you're not quite getting the most of its potential, we're here to help bridge that gap. Our training is tailored to fit your team size, workflows, and skill levels so that you can get the most out of your Asana investment. Head over to surface.com for more information or book a connect call using the link in the description. Next, we're going to go to curated team pages. Now, team pages have been a thing for a long time, but Asana has recently made some updates to it to help us get to the information we need faster um, and really just have a central hub for your team's uh, key resources um, and anything that they need really, really quickly. And so when we go to the team page, we have this new overview section. Now, typically we would have landed on a page like this that would have shown all of the projects in the team. Below it, we would have seen all of your templates that are in the team. Um, and then we would have, you know, still had messages and calendar of all the, you know, different events and tasks. With, within that team as well. But now within the overview section, we have this curated work section here. And so we can go in and we can add work to this by linking existing work inside of Asana in the form of a project or a portfolio. We can add external links or we can attach a file here as well. And so I'm gonna create for us a little file, put that on my desktop for the time being. We can go in and we can add work. And so if I go in, I can, you know, pull up uh, a portfolio or a project. I can rename this like so, add a description, and then it organizes it into this section. So then I can rename this section and we can call this um, Asana Projects and Portfolios like so. We can add another section where I'm going to call this Links maybe. We can go in and we can add an external link. Uh, maybe this is Google and we'll say uh, www.google.com. People still use Google. I don't know. Um, I don't. Uh, there we have links like, like that. And then I can go and add another section. We'll call that images. And then I can go and attach a file from my file sharing uh, location. Or I'm going to take that screenshot we just put up. And there now we have that image uploaded. So it's a way to, again, curate the information and better organize the information that your entire team needs access to rather than needing to go down into a project overview section to get those key files and resources and having to duplicate that over and over again. So a cool update. We can make some changes to the colors. We can, you know, uh, add information to the description here, add some emojis, make it fun and make it personal for your team. All right, and number five, the last update of January 2025 that I want to share with you is the transfer allocations in capacity plans. And so uh, to have the global capacity um, planning option inside a reporting, you have to be at at least the enterprise 
uh, level. And so if you're not seeing this or you don't have access to it, you're either on advanced business or starter uh, or lower. And so if you're on enterprise, feel free to click over to your global reporting and go to capacity plans. And so here we just have a, a dummy capacity plan set up. And again, these capacity plans are really for planning purposes. This is not your workload. This is not based on estimated time or percentage allocation that's assigned to current tasks. This is for future planning so that you can put in resources and plan around who's going to be available to take on those projects and tasks. And so right here we have Craig, who we've assigned some work to. Um, let's maybe add um, another one. Let's add another project, customer webinar. And we're going to say Craig is there for 15% of the time. Let's drag that out a little bit. And we'll move that over here to the beginning of June. Now, something happened and Craig's not going to be available or another project came up and they need to reassign this. So, you know, one option is to simply click and drag it and you can move it around and, you know, put it in time and assign it to another individual. But with this new update, we're able to click on the three dots right here beside that project name and then simply click on transfer allocations. And so this will pop up um, a search bar where you can search for the people that are actually in your capacity plan. They have to be added here first. So I'm going to switch this to Kevin here quickly. All right, we're going to transfer from Craig to Kevin, transfer that time, and then we'll see that it's been removed from Craig's capacity and moved to Kevin's, where then we can go in and make further changes. So if you're a project manager overseeing uh, workload or capacity planning uh, for future resources and projects, and your goal is to really balance the capacity and make sure you have enough people, this is a, a really great feature to get you there a lot faster so you can make game time decisions without having to click and drag and reorder things. And so if you enjoyed this and you found it helpful, I would love for you to pass this video on to someone else who you think might find it helpful. And as always, make sure you like this video, subscribe to the channel if you got some value from today. But as always, thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.